What's up, everybody, and welcome back to All the Things Sword of Truth, the alcohol fueled chapter by chapter reread of the Sword of Truth series with a pouchful of craft brew on the side. I'm Nate. And I'm Jade. And this week we're going to be talking about chapter 26 of Wizard's First Rule. Yeah. <laughs> you... uh, I was going to I was going to say yeah, buddy. <laughs> and then and then I I take into and it turned into <laughs> what what just happened. Okay. Well, lesson learned. Mm-hmm. Lesson learned. Um <laughs> So this chapter was a relatively long one for not a whole lot of things going on. Yeah, I mean, a fair amount happens, but I kind of feel like they Michael Bade this chapter. (laughs) They, Terry. It was a production. Towards like they take something that could be relatively simple and they kind of overloaded it with detail. And I don't want to seem... Like I'm bitching about it because I really like this chapter, but it did kind of feel like that at a couple of points. I agree with you. I felt like there was a lot of filler in this chapter that I wasn't really looking for, <laughs> um, but I'm excited to get through it. Me too. Um, so we start our chapter off with Richard and Kaylin in a slow motion run. Jade and I were talking about this just before going on air, and she was like, like Baywatch? And yeah, that's kind of the way I pictured it. (laughs) They're both running towards the danger. Yeah, I thought it was kind of funny, too, because this whole whole part, it's like yelling fire in a crowded theater. (laughs) Yeah. Instead of, I mean, I get it. I get when um, a child is lost or when you're... When you think one is in danger, you're freaking out a little bit. But as an adult, you're supposed to, like, keep your cool. Yeah, well, yeah. In any emergency, they're like, keep calm. I'm head towards the exits. <laughs> Don't just run and scream because then people end up getting hurt. And that's what he does. Yeah, the entire village just saw Richard get pissed off and hear him and Kay- and, and they're terrified of him and Kaylin, by the way, already. They come just fucking trucking through the village, terrifying everybody. Yeah, and they're trying to make it to Sidden before he opens the pouch that has the stone in it. Right. Because while the stone is inside the pouch, it's, I guess, relatively harmless. But, of course, (laughs) of course, he's trying to get it out of the pouch. We kind of touched on this before, why he would have gone into their packs in the first place, and that's because he's he's a curious kid. If he would have seen the Nightstone, I'd get him wanting to touch the Nightstone. But what happened here is that he saw a pouch in Richard's bag, and he grabbed the pouch and took it out of the bag and then walked to the middle of the village to play with it. And I don't know. It just seemed a little weird to me. Well, not knowing what was in the pouch, what was the draw? Right. Like, is it a cool looking pouch? It doesn't seem like it. It seems like it's just a leather (laughs) pouch. How old is he? Maybe he thought it was money. Okay. Like a coin purse or something like that? Like he was trying to steal? Yeah, I mean, if he's <laughs> if he's real young, then money doesn't really mean shit to a little kid. But if he's a little bit older, or is this village of the kind that they don't really use money? They didn't seem you like know, it. You know, they, they trade shit that they make for things that they need. Yeah, they're and like... it's just, you know, it works that way, because they don't fucking need money. Yeah, they're all a community. They all just kind of work together to give each other what they need. So, yeah, I guess that was my thing. It made sense at the end of the last chapter that we were with them, but now that I was thinking about him sitting in the middle of the village with this pouch, I was like, why the fuck would he have gone all the way out there to open that pouch? Why, If he was that curious, he would have just done it right there. Like, he would have just opened it up and been like... Yeah, that's a good point. Uh-oh. He knew he was being fucking bad, so he took it away where nobody was. <laughs> fucking sit in. That's what I would have done. <laughs> He's the village Carl, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about Carl, but... As the stone drops onto the ground, the shadow people start appearing. Surprise! <laughs> and of course, Richard makes it there just in time. Right, he draws his sword, and he starts fighting him off, and his sword works against the shadow people. Because, for whatever fucking reason. Yeah. But 
as luck would have it, he gets there. Right, and he's, like, telling Kaylin that she better pick up that fucking stone. So as Richard is fighting off these shadow people, he doesn't have time to stop and grab the stone. So they just keep coming and coming and coming, and almost immediately, it says Kalen knew that he wouldn't be able to keep this up for very much longer, and he just started. Yeah. Like, obviously, he can't fight forever, but I'll bet he's got more than ten whole seconds in him. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! Well, the other thing is, too, I kind of feel like fighting shadow people wouldn't take a lot of effort. Like, I get, okay. The sword is probably heavy, and so, like, whipping it around is probably causes some exertion. But the shadow people don't have substance, do they? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's, like, going through flesh and bone. I think it even describes it as going through clouds of smoke. So, like, the resistance factor wouldn't really be there. So there really shouldn't be a reason for him to be slowing down. It would almost be like practicing. Right. I mean, you gotta practice fast. <laughs> it is a very real fight, so maybe his heart's beating and the intensity is super high. So that would drain your energy faster. Yeah, but you know what? This this kind of brings to light why, at the end of this chapter, Caitlin gets asked a question about Richard's stamina. <laughs> right. <laughs> All of a sudden, things are coming a little bit clearer. <laughs> Apparently, he lasts a lot longer than she thought he would. <laughs> Go, buddy, go. Um, so all of this happens through a hail of poison-tipped arrows. Kaylin knows that if they touch the arrows or the shadow people, they're dead. I was a little confused, though, because I thought that we were told earlier that they weren't 100% on what happened if you touch the shadow people. Like, they assumed that it would be bad. <laughs> but nobody, like, they didn't know what these things even were. I think they're just assuming if it touches you, it'll kill you. And if it's not that way, then so be it. But they're going to treat it as if it is because they don't know. Better safe than sorry. Right. Okay. All right. All right. I get it. I just, when I read that, I was like, you don't know that. You're saying you know that, but you don't know that. <laughs> no, probably not. But I don't think anybody would volunteer to go poking their finger <laughs> in it either. Like, all right, just, just a little. Let's see what happens. Just checking. Yeah. <laughs> it took so long, though, for Kaylin to tell them to stop fucking shooting. I feel like like what you were explaining earlier with the with all the filler, like, she described it described for so long how they were dodging the arrows and how they couldn't get hit by them. And I was like, just turn around and be like, fucking knock it off. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I get that they're not trying to hit them. They're trying to hit the shadow people. Right. But they're not there. So the arrows aren't stopping and they're going through the shadow people and continuing on. So if they shot one directly in front of you, you're as good as dead. Yeah. And I think that that first wave came and Caitlin turned around and started hollering, but it sounds like these archers are really good and they probably got a couple of shots off before she was able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like the book probably drew it out longer right. than it was because it was probably all like a fraction of a second. But in my head, the whole time they're describing the arrows, I'm like, tell them to knock it off. Right. <laughs> Why is this even a thing? The, the, <laughs> the first time you see friendly fire whiz past your face, you're like, all right, guys, maybe hold off on that. Yeah. And she screams at them, and then they, like, okay, I won't shoot anymore. But then they pull out their knives and start charging in, and then she has to holler at them again. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, fuck off. Let us handle this, okay? You yeah. don't know what you're doing. Just watch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, she doesn't have any real protection against these things at all, either at this point. She's just dod dodging in, like, with a little bit more caution. Right. And I mean, Richard would be the only safety at this point. You don't want to get too close to him because he's swinging that sword all over the place. Right. <laughs> and this is where Birdman and Toph kind of get into, like, a little power struggle because Birdman's like, okay, we're going to listen to the Mother Confessor and, like, chill the fuck out. And... Toph is like, no, they're killing the ancestors. We got to fucking get them. He thinks that they are killing 
their ancestors. Their already dead ancestors. This is actually a really big deal because he gets a lot of guff for this a little later in the chapter. And, well, not even a little later. Pretty much here in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, But he wholeheartedly believes that Richard and Kaylin are killing his ancestors, which are their super holy being that they, you know, ask for guidance. Right. So they're killing his god right now, kind of, in a way. And he freaks out, but I feel like he does it for a good reason. I feel like he does, but he is also very biased against Richard. So he was ready to do this anyway. Okay. Well, then maybe not. But I was like, man, that's, that's important to them. Like their spirit house. Like if they were just dismantling the spirit house, that would upset a lot of people. I feel like that's what Tofalar is reacting to. Well, I also feel like there is probably a good chance that these shadow people are, um, the shadow people are talking to him. Like he can hear his ancestors speaking to him because they do oh, that. Right. They Absolutely. do the whispering. So he's probably like fully 100% sure that that's who it is. On top of the fact that. I feel like there was a weird connection between him and these shadow people because he was able to get after um after he tells everybody to kill Kaylin and Richard and then the bird man is like, um, no, maybe don't. And Toph just decides to charge anyways. Yeah, he says, fuck it, I'll kill her then. Right. The shadow people like clear a path for him. Yeah, Kaylin sees him start charging. And she pays him no mind because she's like, heh, he's going to touch one eventually. He's going to die and that'll be that. Mm-hmm. And then she does her thing for a second and she turns around and he's closer. <laughs> and then she does her thing for another second and then she turns around and he's fucking there. Yeah. She can't believe that he makes it all the way through. <laughs> and I kind of feel like it was probably dumb luck. <sighs> like he's he's a warrior, so he's ducking and weaving and he's... Not stopping, he is headed directly for her. And so maybe he was so fast that, you know, he just so happened to get through. But there was a line in here that caught my attention. It wasn't that. It wasn't that he was fast because he would stop and plead with these things here and there as he made his way towards Caleb. Right. So I wanted to use this this line to build my point that he thought he was doing a good thing because... He was trying to make it stop, almost as if he didn't want to hurt Kaylin. He was like, hey, knock this off. Hey, why the fuck are you guys doing this? I thought he was pleading with the ancestors to, like, I guess it doesn't really make it clear what he's pleading. I guess I was assuming to let him through. For some reason, I got the feeling that they were being nicer to him than they were to other people. And we know other people in this book so far have had a connection to the underworld. Right. So I guess in my head, I was just like, maybe that motherfucker is like pulling some string. You know, I hadn't thought of that. That's a really good point. Could very well be. Like he's just clearing the path. I don't know. It just, it just, it it was like a, like, huh, maybe that's what's going on. Thought that I had. I mean, really, it could be that. The shadow people knew that he was aiming to kill Kaylin, and they were okay with that, so why stop him? Yeah. Especially since they got that Richard guy slicing us up every time we come anywhere near him. Let's let this guy do it. (laughs) Slice him. It makes sense. Yeah. Sacrifice the enemy, man. (laughs) Well, Toph makes it to her, and at this point, Kaylin's like, she's ready to take him, and then she sees Richard looking at her. Because he has time to, like, stop and look at her, but not time to grab the stone. Yeah, can't grab the stone, but he can (laughs) check her out. Uh, And she's like, oh, shit, can't let him see me do my thing. That's embarrassing. And uh, then she gets her arm sliced to the bone. Fun. I just, to the bone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, all the way in. He gets her good. Yeah, yeah. Like, in her in her upper arm, too. That's not, like... I've never been sliced to the bone, but I imagine not 